Good evening. Welcome to St. John this evening. We get to celebrate a birthday, the birthday of St. John the Baptist. Well, we could just imagine that we're St. John the Baptist this evening then, right? We don't know which St. John we are, so we'll say we're St. John the Baptist. And we're recognizing his birthday, which of course, um, there was a significant event in that Zechariah's mouth was opened and he prophesied. And so that's our gospel text. We get to hear uh, the role of John and what he was given for us to do. We hear lots about John in Advent, right? At least two Sundays in Advent as well. Of course, you're probably doing the math. If it's John's birthday and it's June, what's six months from now? December, Jesus' birthday, right? So the whole six-month-apart thing. All right, very good. Let's turn to our divine service. We're using setting one, page 151. And you can stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your and eternal punishment for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people in the forgiveness of their sins. 
because of the tender mercy of our God, whereby the sunrise shall visit us from on high, to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, through John the Baptist, the forerunner of Christ, you once proclaimed salvation. Now grant that we may know this salvation and serve you in holiness and righteousness all the days of our life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
The Old Testament reading for our, our observation of the Feast of the Nativity of St. John the Baptist is from Isaiah chapter 40. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. This is the word of the Lord. Lord, you were favorable to your land. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave the iniquity of your people. You covered all their sin. You withdrew all your wrath. You turned from your hot anger. Restore us again, O God of our salvation, and put away your indignation toward us. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger to all generations. Will you not revive us again, that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people, to his saints, but let them not turn back to folly. Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him, that glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness meet, righteousness and peace kiss each other. Faithfulness springs up from the ground, and righteousness looks down from the sky. Yes, the Lord will give what is good, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him and make his footsteps his way. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. The second reading is from Acts chapter 13. Now, Paul and his companions set sail from Paphos and came to Perga in Pamphylia. And John left them and returned to Jerusalem. But they went on from Perga and came to Antioch in Pisidia. And on the Sabbath day, they went into the synagogue and sat down. 
After the reading from the law and the prophets, the rulers of the synagogue sent a message to them, saying, Brothers, if you have any word of exhortation for the people, say it. So Paul stood up and, motioning with his hand, said, Men of Israel and you who fear God, listen. The God of this people, Israel, chose our fathers and made the people great during their stay in the land of Egypt. And with uplifted arm, he led them out of it. And for about 40 years, he put up with them in the wilderness. And after destroying seven nations in the land of Canaan, he gave them their land as an inheritance. All this took about 450 years. And after that, he gave them judges until Samuel the prophet. Then they asked for a king, and God gave them Saul, the son of Kish, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, for 40 years. And when he had removed him, he raised up David to be their king, of whom he testified and said, I have found in David, the son of Jesse, a man after my heart, who will do all my will. Of this man's offspring, God has brought to Israel a savior, Jesus, as he promised. Before his coming, John had proclaimed a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was finishing his course, he said, What do you suppose that I am? I am not he. No, but behold, after me one is coming, the sandals of whose feet I am not worthy to untie. Brothers, sons of the family of Abraham, and those among you who fear God, to us has been sent the message of this salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now the time came for Elizabeth to give birth, and she bore a son. And her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown great mercy to her, and they rejoiced with her. And on the eighth day they came to circumcise the child, and they would have called him Zechariah after his father, but his mother answered, No, he shall be called John. And they said to her, None of your relatives is called by this name. And they made signs to his father, inquiring what he wanted him to be called. And he asked for a writing tablet and wrote, His name is John. And they all wondered. And immediately his mouth was opened and his tongue loosed, and he spoke, blessing God. And fear came on all their neighbors. And all these things were talked about through all the hill country of Judea, And all who heard them laid them up in their hearts, saying, What then will this child be? For the hand of the Lord was with him. And when his father Zechariah blessed the Lord, he was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to show the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath that he swore to our father Abraham, to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days." And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people in the forgiveness of their sins, because of the tender mercy of our God, whereby the sunrise shall visit us from on high, to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace." 
And the child grew and became strong in spirit, and he was in the wilderness until the day of his public appearance to Israel. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. We sing the hymn of the day, When All the World Was Cursed, hymn 346. Comfort, yes, comfort my people, says your God. Speak comfort to Jerusalem and cry out to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. In the holy name of Jesus, amen. Probably the most frightful thing is for God to stop speaking to us. And that was the case until John the Baptist came. For some 400 years, God had been silent. There had been no new prophetic voice, not since the chronicler had written down his account at the time of the kings, 
and Malachi recorded his prophecy of the spring or the shoot that would come forth from the stump of Jesse. And then God was quiet. The people had grown anxious. They had grown, well, to wonder, was God really going to save them? And then as we read in the apocryphal books, for example, First and Second Maccabees, well, the people take matters into their own hands and try to bring about the Messiah or just appoint someone to be the Messiah over and over. Judas Maccabeus coming the closest to perhaps fulfilling that. For, for a time, Rome was cast out of Jerusalem, but only for a time. But even worse, perhaps, than God being silent were those words that God had left them with. For those of you who have attended Sunday morning Bible study, you've heard how difficult a word God had spoken to them, in our case by the prophet Ezekiel. Chapter after chapter after chapter of judgment, of condemnation, of destruction, and only briefly nestled occasionally in those first 30-some chapters, some hope of a restoration, a return. Well, of course, then the end of the book and the last prophecies are of a restoration, a return, a resurrection, dry bones coming together and flesh coming upon them and life being breathed into them and that fallen nation being restored again. The people had returned to Israel. The nation of a sort had been restored, on, although under Herod and the Roman government. But where was this full restoration? Where was this resurrection? Where was this new kingdom? Why had God in his glory not once again appeared in the temple that Herod had re rebuilt? And so they wondered, and they were terrified, and they took matters into their own hands rather than be patient and wait for God to accomplish what he had promised to them by way of the prophets even those prophets in exile, Ezekiel, or the prophet in, in Israel. That would have been Jeremiah, those final prophets. And then one comes, and he proclaims comfort. A baptism for repentance and the remission of sins. John the Baptist. He came to do what the prophets had long foretold. As his father himself said by the Spirit, prophesying, that's actually the first prophet restored, isn't it? He said, blessed is the Lord God of Israel, that is, the lost nation, for he has already now visited and redeemed his people, already now has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. How did Zechariah know? That Messiah that he's prophesying of, who indeed is in the womb of the Virgin Mary, has not yet even come to visit her cousin. And yet here is Zechariah by the Spirit foretelling what is already true, Mary now some th three months pregnant. Just as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets, who have been since the world began. This has been God's plan all along. Yes, not according to our timetable. We grow weary and anxious, waiting and wondering, is God truly going to keep his word? But he does. In his time and according to his will, when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of the woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law, as the apostle says. Why did he send this, this shoot or son from the house of the servant David? that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. God has not forgotten his promises. God keeps his promises today and always. That mercy that he had promised the offspring that would crush the serpent's head as he had spoken to Eve and to the serpent and to Adam, the offspring by whom all the nations of the earth would be named, as he had spoken to Abraham. The offspring, that promise again, offspring repeated to, a promise repeated, I should say, to uh, Isaac and to Jacob, has come. 
Zechariah says. All according to the oath, according to the promise that he swore, God swore to Abraham to be delivered from the hand of our enemies. Of course, then the question is, maybe they weren't looking for the right sort of Messiah. Were they looking for salvation from the Romans? It seems some thought that. Were they looking for salvation from an unjust taxation society? It seems that's the case for some. Thus their hatred of tax collectors. Were they looking for maybe salvation from the immoral amongst them that were trying to drag them down into their sin? Maybe. But the salvation that he is speaking of is the salvation actually of each individual person, of the sin that plagues us, that clings so tenaciously to our flesh, of death that haunts us because of our sin, and of the lies and temptations of the devil and his legion that go about trying to make shipwreck and destroy our faith. Those are the enemies that he has come to destroy, Jesus, and he has defeated them by his cross, just as he promised and swore and testified by the mouth of the prophets all those days. So we come to John. John, who is the herald and the one who comes to announce Jesus, to bring, well, the people to the knowledge and to point his finger at Jesus. Jesus who has come to save them. And so, He shows himself in the wilderness just as the prophets had foretold, preaching repentance for the forgiveness of sins, baptizing unto repentance to prepare the way to level the playing field, bring down the mountains and lift up the valleys, all made equally equal, that is forgiven in the name of Jesus now, and also, well, no distinction, Jew and Gentile, slave and free, even elite and middle class and lower class, all are brought to that baptism, confess their sins in repentance, and are forgiven in the blood that will flow from the Savior's side. Finally, after 400 years of silence, after devastating prophecies from the prophets in exile and those in the conquered lands, finally, The good news has come. And that good news is Jesus, not John. John says he must decrease that Jesus would increase. And so John's baptism gives way to Jesus' baptism in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. John himself gives way to Jesus as he is imprisoned and sends his disciples over to now follow Jesus like the sons of Zebedee. And John points to Jesus as the one in whom everything he was doing pointed towards. Even his baptism pointed to the Lamb of God, as he calls him, Jesus, who takes away the sins of the world. So we can celebrate John's birthday, but especially celebrate the way that God keeps his promises, that he doesn't forget those promises, the oath he swore to Abraham, and he doesn't forget the promises he's made to you. That in your baptism, he has overcome sin, death, and Satan for you. That in his body and blood on the altar, you receive the Lamb of God who takes away your sins, and indeed the sins of the world. And that having been forgiven and restored and fed and nourished, heaven is, of course, not only your hope, but the oath, the promise God has made to you. That you now, as part of his church, are part of the body of Christ, part of his kingdom, that kingdom now by faith, and finally on the last day by sight. When you will join all the saints who have been baptized in Jesus' name, including John the Baptist. May God strengthen your faith as as he strengthened John to point to Jesus. In the holy name of Jesus, amen. We stand and we confess the creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. 
and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of begotten, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O Lord God, Heavenly Father, who since the world began, has spoken unto us by the mouth of thy holy prophets, and given unto us exceedingly great and precious promises. We thank thee that thou hast been faithful in all thy covenants, and didst visit and redeem thy people by raising up in the house of David a prince and savior, even Jesus Christ, to give us remission of sins, deliverance from the power of evil, and the hope of everlasting life. We praise thee especially this day that thou didst prepare the way of our Lord by the word of thy prophet and messenger, John the Baptist, whom thou didst ordain as a preacher of repentance, and that by his voice as one crying in the wilderness, thou didst give knowledge of salvation unto thy people, light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and counsel to guide their feet into the way of peace. Grant us, we beseech thee, the gift of thy Holy Spirit, that we may receive in faith the testimony of those who beheld the divine glory of, of the Lord Jesus Christ, and who without wavering bore witness to his grace and truth even unto death, to the end that according to thy glorious power we might be strengthened against all temptation, be filled with the knowledge of thy will, be fruitful in every good work, and be made worthy to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Rule and govern thy church upon earth, O Lord, that all who preach therein may do so with fearlessness and fidelity, that all who teach therein may have wisdom and grace, and that all who in any way serve therein may hold the faith in a pure conscience and seek those things that pertain to thine eternal kingdom. Bestow upon them the mind of Christ and deliver them from error and schism, lukewarmness and hypocrisy. We pray for the nations. Turn them to the Lamb that takes away the sins of the world. Incline the hearts of the multitudes to the reception of his truth. And deliver them from the tyrannies of force, falsehood, and fear. Give them knowledge of thy salvation and save them from the works of evil. Preserve our own land in righteousness and peace, and to this end give diligence and devotion to all who hold authority, that they may administer our laws in accordance with thy will, encourage obedience thereto, and punish all wickedness. Let thy benediction rest upon our homes, nourish our children in the words of faith and good doctrine, and keep all parents in the way of godliness, so that they may be patterns of love and purity for their children. Remember the afflicted and touch them with the healing power of thy presence. Manifest thyself as a very present help in time of trouble, their strength and their shield. And as thou hast appointed a day when thy son shall return to judge the world in righteousness, 
Keep us by thy grace and mercy in continual fellowship with thee and with all who look forward to his appearing. All these petitions we entreat thee to grant and such other things as thou seest we need. In the name and for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may greet one another with the peace of Christ. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will offer the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call on the name of the Lord. I will take a cup of salvation and will call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord now in the presence of all his people in the courts of the Lord's house. In the midst of you, O Jerusalem. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through who Jesus Christ, our Lord, whose way John the Baptist prepared, proclaiming him the promised Messiah, the very Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world and calling sinners to repentance, that they might escape from the wrath to be revealed when he comes again in glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, 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 not in the highest. Sit is he 
who, who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, hot in the highest. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Receive the breath. By your love, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you, body and soul, for life everlasting. For in His peace.
Let us pray. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.